So we see credit volume characteristics. I mean, the splits are really interesting, right? So you see in a place like Germany, right? Uh, third largest economy, relatively high percentage of consumer lending relative to business lending. I mean, this is the home of the Mittelstand, right? These are these family owned businesses, the backbone of the economy. It's an SME based economy. You look at the UK, which is a service economy, and all of a sudden you see significantly higher proportion of business lending. And these are percentages, and I can tell you the absolute numbers. The business lending in the UK market is 20-fold what it is in the German market, um, which is interesting, and I'll explain a little bit why in a minute. So we see Japan, there's essentially no business lending. Netherlands, no, I'm sorry, no consumer lending. Uh, Netherlands, no consumer lending. Singapore, no consumer lending. Very interesting to see these global patterns. You know, sometimes it's actually, someone mentioned culture about cash and things. These things actually have a bearing. I'll tell you, in Finland, for example, um, there's a very strong um, sort of uh, religious um, Lutheran, you live within your means. So there is a real social stigma associated, but actually what it's done in Finland, it's driven the consumer lending online because I don't have to go to the local bank branch and stare at the guy in the eye and tell him I want to borrow to go on a vacation. Socially awkward, okay? So the internet, you know, you see these things that are really quite interesting, okay? And so I'll just tell you a bit, we took a look at UK P2P SME lending volumes. I mean, this is, you got some big financial, that is an interesting number, right? 2017, 10% of all uh, new loans to SMEs was through a peer-to-peer -peer lending channel. So these are people investing through an intermediated platform, also institutional funding, probably about 40% of the market today with inv large institutional investors investing. I think that's probably the highest proportion we see in the developed world, is my guess. And so we asked the question, you know, and this is the question I think a lot of people have in their minds, particularly institutional investors, is this a substitute or a complement to bank-based lending? All of this peer-to-peer -peer stuff going on, right? And it's very important from a regulator's perspective because if you're just cannibalizing and a substitute for what banks are doing, why should you support it? If it's actually addressing a different market, then I think there's a stronger case to say you should, I don't want to use the word accommodate, but create a regulatory environment that is more enabling. 